Manny, hey, hey. Maddie just totally took off with my outline for this video. Crazy cow. Howdy folks, Cody here at More Than Farmers and this here is Maddie. She's due to freshen, which means to have a calf. She's due to have a calf tomorrow and we use sex semen again this year so she's supposed to have a heifer calf. We are one day before due date. It's morning, early morning, we come out and do chores. There's always a moment of truth. I walk around this corner of the barn and there's no cow. Last year she went right on her due date, which is tomorrow, so. So you've got your cow, you've been dreaming about having your own fresh milk. It's getting close to that time she's supposed to have a calf and you're starting to get a little scared. But let me tell you, it is a lot more simple than you might think that it is. And in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the stuff you need for the cow's health, the calf's health, and the milking supplies that you're gonna need to get you started. So the first thing you're gonna need, and this is just super basic, but I gotta say it. First thing you're gonna need when you're expecting a baby calf is a clean, dry place for your cow and calf to be. My brother-in-law one time didn't know his cow was gonna have a calf. Calved out in the field, it was really rainy. The calf actually drowned in a puddle and died. So all I've got here is just a roof over me and then I put straw down. And let me take you over here and I'll show you what I've got in the barn. So most of the time, this roof right here is just fine for a cow. When the weather's nice, but when in the winter, when the weather's really nasty or whatever, I can open up this door. All it really is is just a three-sided shed. You can see the me rusty metal on that back wall there. This was an old corn crib that I turned into my barn. First, let's go over what you're gonna wanna have on hand for your cow's health. Very first thing on that list is to have your local vet's phone number in your phone, ready to go. And I would suggest even calling them up before this thing's gonna happen. You know, make sure that they actually treat cattle and things like that. The three main things that you're gonna wanna watch for that I've dealt with anyways, is milk fever, mastitis, and edema. And all those things are very treatable, but you wanna catch them as soon as possible. So it'd be really good to learn what to watch out for before it happens. And I'd say one of the best ways to do this is just to really watch your cow every day for this happening so you can see how she acts normally so you can better detect something that's abnormal. But the main abnormal things that you're gonna see is if her eyes are really sunken, if you look at a cow. Matt, you wanna get your head up here? I don't know if you can see from there, but see how her eyes are kind of like almost bulging out a little bit? If her eyes are sunken back in her head, that is not a good sign. If she just looks really lethargic and she's a little, looks like she's a little tipsy or something, not walking right, that's a bad sign that probably means she's gonna be going down with milk fever. And then if she's down on the ground and can't get up, that is a sure sign of milk fever that you need to take care of that right away. If you feel her ears, um, like on the back of her ears and her ears feel cold, that would also be a sign of that as well. It is Saturday morning, June the 4th. It is Maddie's due date, but there's no calf yet. Last year, when I came out on the morning of her due date, she had a calf already. So I was half expecting that to happen this time, but you never know with this stuff. This stuff here is what you're gonna have on hand for milk fever. And this is a calcium paste. And I would suggest if you have a cow that's had milk fever before, that you give this to her right after she calves as a preventative measure. And then if it does happen that she does go down with milk fever, you're gonna wanna have an IV set like this on hand and also calcium gluconate, just a bottle of this. And what you're gonna do if she does go down with milk fever and you catch it really soon, you can just do a subcutaneous injection, which is basically just putting the needle under the skin. And you just put this bottle onto this IV tube, stick the needle on the skin and let it go in there. I don't wanna try to explain exactly how to do all this stuff. I've had some experience with it, but not enough to claim to be a super expert with it. So I would really suggest that you read the book, Keeping a Family Cow. Let me grab that. This book right here, Keeping a Family Cow. This is a super good book with great information on how to do this stuff. I'll put a link in the description below so you can find it really easily. A lot of great advice in there and it's a very natural minded book as well. So anyways, if she does go down with milk fever and you get her back up with this calcium gluconate, then you can also give this to her a little bit later as a preventative measure so that she doesn't go down again because they can go down again. The next big thing to watch out for is mastitis. And the way that's gonna show up is if she's got, if her udders looks red or it's hot or like really, really hard or something like that. Or if you've started milking her and you're seeing clumps in the milk, it's usually only gonna hit one quarter at a time. What you wanna do is you wanna keep that quarter milked out 
as often as possible, like every couple hours even sometimes, or at least a few times a day, milking that udder all the way out. Keep the calf on her to milk it out as often as possible. And then the other really good thing to do for that is to give her garlic, it's like a whole bulb of garlic, crush it up and put it with some molasses and maybe like sweet feed, mix it up and give it to her. She'll chow that right down and that really helps. Obviously that's going to make the milk taste like garlic. It's just kind of the way it is. The other way that people deal with that is giving a cow antibiotics and we don't want to do that. So have some garlic on hand to be able to do that to treat that mastitis. I don't know guys, this is looking a little bit like she might be going into labor. We're at about 9.15 on the evening of her due date. We'll see what happens, I guess. The other thing you're gonna watch for right after she calves and when her milk's coming in is edema. And basically that's just a swelling when her milk's coming in. It can feel a little bit hard um, if you're to the place where you're milking and you're milking her all the way out and it's like you can't get any more milk but it still feels kind of hard and it just, everything looks really swelled out. That's edema. And it's not something that's like deadly dangerous that you need to worry about. It will usually go away. But what can happen if the edema is really bad, there's tiny blood vessels in there that can burst and you'll actually end up with blood in your milk. And that's disgusting. We had that happen last year and I don't want to happen again. So this year I'm going to try something called Dynamint. There's another one called Uttermint that people use. If you notice when I stick this up here, it's blue. This is the only one that our local feed store had in stock was this blue stuff. And I guess it's for people with bigger dairies that want to see each cow that's gotten it and it leaves a blue color on her udder so not a fan of that idea but it still is organic approved and so we're just going to go ahead and use it because that's what we've got i will say though that this has peppermint oil in it so it is going to help with the edema to help the swelling go down but you don't want to keep using it then after you get past it because peppermint oil will lower her production i've got a friend that's had guernsey cows for a little longer than i have and i just ran this list by him to see what he thought about it another thing that he suggested that i've ever i've never actually done is having some molasses water for your cow right after she calves he said they'll often drink like 10 gallons of it right after they calve it gives them a boost of energy basically what you're going to do is mix two and a half cups of molasses black strap molasses with five gallons of water so like five cups with 10 gallons of water and have that available for your cow right after she calves, along with some fresh water. So let's move on to what you're gonna need now for your calf's health. Sunday morning, day after her due date, and still no calf. I'm hoping she doesn't go while we're at church and I miss it. Most of the time, your calf is gonna be just fine. I just wanna tell you that up front, but there are some things to watch out for. I'll talk more about what to watch for and what to do when the calf is on the ground in the next video that I do after she has her calf. But I'll just show you here what to have on hand. First of all, what you wanna have on hand is a bottle and a syringe. If the calf is drinking, then you're able to put either water mixed with something in here or mix something with her milk to put in there so they can drink out of that. But it's down and it's not drinking, you've got this thing that you're able to squirt something in the side of its mouth. Once your calf is born, it should be trying to get up and stuff within about 15 minutes and within half an hour, kind of be staggering around or whatever and hopefully be drinking soon after that. If a couple hours goes by and it's not drinking yet, you need to help that thing start to drink. That colostrum is the best medicine a calf can get. And hopefully you won't need to do anything other than that. If you've got a calf that's down and it needs an energy boost or whatever, you're gonna to wanna to have some extra electrolytes on hand. I've got this stuff right here. I've only used it once or twice, or whatever. Uh, the main thing that you're gonna to wanna to watch for is scours, and that is like really bad diarrhea. I've never really had a problem with calves that actually came from my cow, but calves that I brought in, I've had a problem with it. I've lost a few to that, so you really gotta watch that. I've tried different things that have worked and didn't work, whatever. One thing that I read that I haven't tried and that if it ever happens again, this is what I'm gonna do, is to mix apple cider vinegar with milk and give it to the calf. The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to have on hand for your calf and for your cow is an iodine solution. And that's just so, just in case something happens, they get a cut or something gets infected that you can put that on there. And I'm gonna say those are the basic things that you're gonna to wanna to have on hand for your calves and your cow's health. Now we can go over some of the stuff you're gonna need in your milking stall, in your barn, and the milking supplies that you're gonna to need to get started milking. I'm in the barn just so I have some light. It's about 4.30 in the morning and I happened to wake up so I decided to come out here and check on her. It looks like she's in labor. When I came out, it looks like she was trying to push. So I'm staying out here now, to see what happens next. First of all, let's talk about the milking stall. So I've seen a lot of questions about this and it really just does not have to be so complicated. People build these fancy stanchions and stuff like that and it's totally fine if you wanna do that, but it's not necessary. You saw out there when we were out in the corral, open this barn door up and she can just walk right in here to this stall. And all it is is a small stall, I'm gonna say what, about five feet wide or so. And I've got a little bucket thing right here to put grain in and then a clip right here just to clip onto her halter. And it's as simple as that. You can see I don't have a concrete floor. This is just straw. 
And what I do is I put nice, fresh, clean straw down every morning. And that is really all you need. I am very picky about being clean. I am very picky about how I take care of my milk. I'm very picky about having my cow have a clean udder, but it's not about having everything sterile. We have been fed a lot of lies when it comes to this stuff, okay? Let's just leave it right there. So right here by my milking stall, I've got this little medicine cabinet, and in, in here, I've got some fly spray. I am not a fan of using chemicals for anything around here as much as possible. This is one place where I have not found a good solution for fly spray. My cow will get some really big bumps. She'll just get like all covered on her neck with bumps and stuff and she looks miserable when she gets fly bites. And so I've tried different homemade fly sprays and none of them have worked very good for me at all. So I finally broke down and went and got some conventional fly spray. I did make sure that it is one for dairies. So I figured that might be a little bit better. The other thing out here is these cloths that I use to clean her udder. And I've got a whole stack of them in here. And I've explained this in another video, but basically when I come out here to milk, I bring a small bucket of hot soapy water to clean her udder. And I'm never gonna dip a cloth back in that bucket after I clean her udder with it. So I use several cloths each time that I come out to milk. And those are reusable, so you go back in the house and get washed and come back out here. And along with cleaning her udder with the cloths, I also have this bucket of teat wipes. So after I've cleaned her udder off with the cloths, I will take the teat wipes just over the teats to make sure those are extra clean. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're at day two after Maddie's due date and still no calf. Ah. So maybe the due date's wrong, I don't know. So just waiting. I thought for sure it was gonna be this morning. I woke up randomly at 4.30 and I decided to come out here and check. And I was almost positive I saw her pushing. So I stayed out here for a little while and nothing happened. Went back out to eating grass. I've been up since 4.30. <laughs> so I guess we'll see. Me and Shelly are going on a date. Maybe she'll go while we're gone. You're also gonna want some kind of milking stool. The one I've got is pretty sweet. It's actually an antique steel stool that came off of an Amish farm. I really like that thing. The three-legged thing is awesome because you set it next to the cow and you can rock if you need to or move a little bit. You also wanna have a halter on hand for your calf. Once she's about two weeks old, I wanna put a halter on her and tie her up next to the milking stall when I bring the cow in for milking so that she can get used to learning to be a milker. And if it's a bull calf, I still wanna have a halter on him so that I can handle him a lot easier if I need to catch him or something like that. One more thing to have out here is a set of hobbles. Um, a lot of people use a cow can't kick bar. I've never used one of those. This is just what was told to me when I first started and it works for what I need it for. If your cow is a kicker and there's a good chance if you're a first time milker or if she's a first time milker that she will kick, you clip that on her legs and it makes sure she can't kick. So let's go in the house now and I'll show you what you need to have on hand as for milking supplies. And this will mostly apply to those of you who like me will be hand milking your cow. We're at day three after Maddie's due date. I woke up at about 2.30 and came out and checked on her. No cap, nothing happening. So I'm going out here again. Let's see, it looks like she's in the stall. Let's see her out here. Can't see anything yet. Let's go see. There she is, just about how she's been looking for the last several days. Start it off. You're gonna want a good milk pail. You don't wanna get one of those cheap stainless steel buckets. You want one with the edges not curled over. When it's curled over, the milk can get into those cracks and stay in there. You're not gonna be able to clean that out. You're gonna end up with bacteria growing in there. So you want one, a seamless stainless steel bucket. And I also have a bigger bucket. That was a 13 quart. This is actually a five gallon stainless steel bucket. And what I use this for is when I'm milking, I will milk some milk into my pail under the cow. And then I've got some ice water bottles that I put in here and have a cloth over top, which is a flour sack towel with a rubber band to hold it on. And then I will pour the milk into here every once in a while as I'm milking. So that way, if she happens to kick the bucket, I don't lose all my milk and it keeps the flies out of the milk. It's just like an extra step of filtering too with this cloth on here. Then once I come into the house, I will pour it through a disposable filter. I've got a milk strainer for that. Absolutely love it. What you use is a non-gauze milk filter that you'll put in here and there's a little ring that you'll snap in. 
and that holds the actual filter in there. These are the jugs that we use. We absolutely love these too. We started out using glass. I mean, it is a good idea to use glass as far as I believe it's healthier and stuff like that, but we had some pretty big accidents with some glass jars and milk, and we didn't want to keep repeating that. So we started using these plastic jugs, and these are amazing because they are square, so they fit much more nicely into the refrigerator. And I will have links for all this stuff in the description below so you can find this stuff really easily. But you can find these at Walmart or on Uline. These are the milk filters that I use with that strainer. These are actually bigger than what you would want to get. These are six and a half, and this is what I've been using with what we had before, but I had a whole bunch of them that I bought. So if you were to get this strainer, you would get the four and a half inch ones, and you can actually get those together on Shenandoah Homestead Supply, and I'll put a link for that in the description below as well. If you're watching this video, and you got your first cow and you're gonna have a calf soon, let me know in the comments because I am super excited for you. I just can't wait till our cow has her calf due tomorrow. I'm really hoping I could get the birth on video. And as soon as that happens and I get stuff recorded and edited, I'm gonna do a video on what to do right after she has a calf. And once that's done, I'll put that right here so you can watch it next. This time I could tell there was something there. I looked out my bedroom window and saw her licking at something. Right down there, see those little feet? <laughs> it's a calf. <laughs>